you read Exodus 32, write it down. Verse 26 to verse 27. This was the second most costly sin. The children of Israel leave Egypt on the way to their destiny, the promised land. 1,000 men died in one day because of the God of gold. You read 2 Kings 5, verse 20 to 22. You know the story of Elijah and Elisha. Elisha is Elijah's servant. Elijah leaves and Elisha receives the double portion. How many know what I'm talking about? Now Elisha's got the mantle. Now he's got a servant. And his servant wants his mantle. But his servant sees Nahum, the Syrian, who's being healed of leprosy. And he sees him leaving now. But he sees him leaving with his wealth and his money. And the servant of Elisha chases Nahum, comes after his chariot. Nahum stops his chariot, says, what are you chasing me for? He says, just a little silver, a garment. He covetously takes from Nahum that which was to be given to the prophet. But the prophet did not want it. And Nahum takes it. He goes back to the prophet. And the prophet says, where have you been? He's not going to tell him. But the prophet says, I know where you've been. I've seen what you've done. You chased the prophet of Nahum. You wanted what he got and you got it. But now I'm going to tell you something. He says to his servant, the leprosy that was on Nahum is now upon you and upon your seed. Financial corruption. He coveted the things of a wealthy man. And he went and he took. And because he took, because he coveted that financial corruption, that spirit of gold came upon him. And he lies to the prophet of God. And the prophet of God says, the leprosy that's on Nahum is now coming on you and your seed and your children. Can you imagine? Can you imagine exchanging the mantle of Elisha that had the mantle of Elijah for just a little silver and a garment. He exchanged his destiny of the unction of Elisha for leprosy. Don't be deceived by the God of gold. It will come and it will corrupt you. Don't chase the God of gold. Chase God, the creator of the world. Don't be like Judas, who for a little silver sold his birthright. Don't be like Ananias and Sapphira. The gold killed them. Don't you dare be like King Solomon, who had more money than anybody. But the spirit of whoredom came upon him. And the Bible said 700 wives and 300 concubines. And he became perverted because of the things he had. He did not know how to discipline his appetites. Men and women of God, listen to me, please. In the hour that we're living in, we cannot submit to seducing spirits of immorality. And we cannot su submit ourselves to the spirits of financial corruption. Amen. Covetousness is one of the major strategies of the devil. To cause you to covet something that does not belong to you. The answer to covetousness is contentment. Did you hear me? It's contentment. But if money determines your mood, then you're in trouble. If plenty has to be your identity, then you're in trouble. The key to break covetousness is to practice the giving life. The giving life will free you from financial corruption. Somebody say, hallelujah. Quickly, the third spirit is the spirit of rebellion.